In this video, I'll show you how to install the latest version of Audio Cipher on Windows. I'm using Windows 10, but if you've upgraded to 11, the setup will be pretty much the same. We're going to take a look at both the standalone application and the VST3 plugin, and we'll test everything in both Ableton Live and FL Studio. So once you've purchased Audio Cipher, you'll receive a zip folder like this, which contains the installers. And I've given this a custom name and dropped it here on my desktop just to keep things simple for this tutorial. But of course, you're welcome to save this wherever it's easiest for you to find, and you can rename it if you'd like. So first, we need to extract the files from this folder. So we'll just right click and select Extract All. Of course, if you have something like 7-zip or WinZip, you're welcome to use that instead. But I'm just going to use the Extract All option here. And then we can hit Extract at the bottom right. And then you'll see that this has created a new folder here on the desktop. And of course, this folder will show up wherever you've saved that initial zip folder. So now we can double click and check out our installer files. So let's begin with the standalone application installer. Let's just double click and you might receive this little alert window, but we just need to click run anyway, and that will open up the setup wizard. And then we can move through the process pretty quickly here. But I do just want to call out that this is going to create a folder in the program files folder. So the new one will be called Audio Cipher Technologies, and that will include the standalone application. So let's hit next, next, and then let the installation complete. OK, so the installation is finished. We can click close. And then let's go ahead and find that standalone application. OK, so I've opened up my file explorer and I'm here in local disk C. So I'll just need to go into program files and here's that audio cipher technologies folder. And then here is our standalone application. So here in audio cipher up at the top, we have this toggle switch that goes between melody generator and chord generator. Down below, we can select the root and scale to determine which key signature we want to use. And you'll notice that right now the chord option is grayed out and that's because I've set it to the melody generator. When generating melodies, Audio Cipher will create single tones that correspond to whichever letters you type out here in the cryptogram field. But if we switch it over to the chord generator, Audio Cipher will actually generate chords based on those notes. So we can customize this by selecting any of the 12 chromatic tones here, any of the scale modes available in this list. And then in the chord section, you can use either the basic triad, select one of these chord extensions, or if you want to get experimental with it, select random. As I mentioned here in the cryptogram field, we can type out a series of letters or words or whatever you want, really. If we go with music, this is five letters, so we'll receive five different notes. And since we're selecting the chord generator, we'll get five chords based on those notes. Down below, we can adjust the note duration, which adjusts the speed of the MIDI notes when we generate our MIDI file. You can also randomize the rhythm here. And in the standalone application, we have these playback tools, so you can play, stop, or pause. And once you've configured everything and you're happy with it, you can click and drag the MIDI file out of Audio Cipher and into your digital audio workstation. OK, so let's go ahead and test this out in Ableton Live. So if we're happy with everything in here, we can click and hold the drag to MIDI button and then pull this MIDI file directly into a MIDI track. Now, one thing to keep in mind when using Ableton Live is that the tempo information contained in the MIDI file generated by Audio Cipher might impact your session tempo if you haven't adjusted it already. So by default, the Ableton session tempo is 120 BPM. If you haven't touched it, you may notice that your tempo gets bumped up like this. So you'll just need to double click and switch it back to 120. But if you have adjusted the tempo before pulling in that MIDI file, then you don't have anything to worry about. So now if we take a look at this MIDI file, we can double click and pull up the piano roll. And you'll see here that we have a series of chords that were generated corresponding to the five letters in the word music that we typed out. And then we can do the exact same thing in FL Studio. So I'm just going to click and hold the drag to MIDI button and then pull this MIDI file onto an instrument here in the channel rack. And then you can see both on the channel rack itself and in the piano roll that those same chords have been generated here in FL Studio. OK, so we've played around with the standalone application. Let's go ahead and install our VST3 plugin. So let's come back here to the installer folder and double click on the VST3 file. Just like we saw with the standalone, we'll just need to click more info on this window and hit run anyway. And then again, we'll be taken to the Audio Cipher setup wizard. 
and then in this wizard you'll notice that the installation path shows that the file will be added to the common files folder in the VST3 folder and then it'll be listed under audio cipher technologies so let's just click next next and then let the installation complete for the plugin as well okay so we've just finished our installation so we can hit close and let's go ahead and begin with FL Studio to test this as a plugin. If we come up here to the options menu and then select manage plugins, we can go ahead and expand this window so we can see the file path for each of these. You'll notice that FL Studio is detecting plugins in the folders listed here. So we need to find the new AudioCypher VST3 file. So let's just hit find more plugins up here at the top. And you may have noticed there for a split second, Audio Cipher was the first one to come up. If we scroll down here to the bottom, you can see that it has located the VST3 file in that new folder that was set up in Common Files. Okay, and now I've just minimized the plugin window a little bit so we can take a look at the mixer that I've pulled up here because we want to drag Audio Cipher out of the plugins list and onto a track. So let's just click and hold and drag Audio Cipher onto slot one over here. Now we can close the plugins window and then we have the VST3 plugin version of Audio Cipher on screen. And you'll notice that the playback features are not available in the VST3 version. So the same thing applies just like when we looked at the standalone. You can just fill everything out here and then drag the MIDI file directly onto a MIDI instrument. Now let's go ahead and test the VST3 plugin in Ableton Live. Up here on the options menu, if we select preferences and then open the plugins folder, you'll notice that the VST3s require a custom folder in Ableton. So I've set this to a folder that I put together myself and we'll just need to add the VST3 file to that folder so Ableton can detect it. So as we saw during the installation process, Audio Cipher was adding that VST3 file to our local disk under program files and then under common files and here's that VST3 folder which contains audio cipher technologies so let's just go ahead and back up to the VST3 folder and let's copy this folder and now let's go ahead and add this to the custom VST3 folder okay so I've opened up my custom VST3 folder and we're ready to paste in the audio cipher VST3 so if we paste it, we get the folder, and then the VST3 is contained within. So now we can return to Ableton Live, and if we open the preferences, either by going up to Options and Preferences again, or by pressing Control and Comma, we can come back here and look in the Plugins tab, and we'll need to rescan. Okay, so the scan is complete, and if we look over here under Plugins, we have this VST3 folder and then Audio Cipher Technologies has been detected, so we can now drag Audio Cipher onto a track in our session here. So now you're ready to use Audio Cipher as either a standalone application or a VST3 plugin in the digital audio workstation of your choice. I hope this video was helpful and thank you for watching.